excited. Yeah, exactly. Are you excited? It's a classic. Aluda mentioned in the store. Techno when technology stops know, working, like technology is the worst. <laughs> yeah. I just find like people like to take photos and they add it to the story and I'm like, but will you ever look at that photo again? Because yes, I don't do stories, I just do posts which means around. Because yes, I don't do stories, I just do posts which means around. Because yes, I don't do stories, I just do one. to be doing lots of voting and polling, asking scientists questions. This is an opportunity for you to learn as much as you can about the things you've always wanted to know. So, now before I introduce everyone, I'd like to tell you to download one app. So it's an Arludo app, and this is how we're gonna interact and actually collect data together. So everyone out there in YouTube land, if you guys go to your Google Play Store or your Apple App Store and grab and search for cat burglary, all one word, Search that, download that app, and what we're gonna do is you're gonna be able to play along with us here and you'll be collecting data with everyone in this room. So when you do get there, make sure when that app is loaded, take a look in your upper left-hand corner, you'll see a little shadowy person, press that and type in the code SSFA19 for Sydney Science Festival 19. And that's how we're gonna aggregate all your data so we can show that data in front of the in front of everybody here and to you guys and all these scientists up here and you guys are going to analyze all that data together. So we're going to have a lot of fun. So now it's time for me to introduce our first guest and that is Dax Kelly. So <laughs> you guys didn't see that on screen. Now do that face again so that okay. everyone can see it now. There we go. There we go. Excellent. That's fantastic. Dax, you are a scientist. This is true. Yeah. So, how, so you're finishing your PhD. Correct. And how long have you been at it now? Uh, like four years or something. And how do you like it? It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you? It doesn't sound very convincing, unfortunately. Uh, I can be more convincing. <laughs> it's super good. Yeah, there we go. So I'd like to show a little bit of Dax's work. So we've got that slide up there that we can show a little bit about Dax. Oh, do we? Have, let's see if we. Oh, we've got this in the wrong order. It's oh, okay. You know, Dax. That's me. You know, I'm gonna come back to you. Okay. I believe you're last. Are you sure that's not me? That, I'm 100. percent It's not you. Okay. You're a much better looking sp uh, fish specimen oh, than this one. Shin, we're gonna go with you because <laughs> I totally messed up the order of things. I should have looked left <laughs> instead of looking right. So Shin, we've got something popping up now, yep. and it is not exactly your study organism, but it's related to it. So now we're gonna do a little poll for everyone in the audience. If you go up on Slido, take a look, and I'd like you to answer. What do you think this is? Let me see. Where is that poll? It is. Who dis good looking thing? It <laughs> is. Wait, how do we get the? Oops. It's a oh, there we go. Is it a new Star Wars character mask? Is it a Sydney Harbor fish? Or is it a new textured leather purse by Louis Vuitton? <laughs> so all you guys can, uh, you here and everyone in YouTube land, Take a look and have a guess at what you think it is, and then we'll ask Shin over here to explain what's going on. So what, let's see what the votes are looking at, poll results. I know, I'm super excited. So, so far, 
There's about 40% of everyone thinks it's a new Star Wars character mask, <laughs> which is not bad. And we've got 50% looking at a Sydney Harbor fish. Shin, what is it? It is a Sydney Harbor fish. Although it's not a bad idea for a Star Wars character. <laughs> <laughs> you know I think they've kind of already done the fish species on Star Wars, so it would kind of fits along with that quite well. So, Shin, why don't you tell a little bit about your research and why that fish plays such a role, or f species like it do? Um, yeah, so basically, small fish like that, um, a lot of people don't get to see. Um, we know the harbor is recovering from historical pollution and all that, but um, a lot of the time they look at you know things people can fish and eat. Yeah. Brim. Nathalie, well, so how big like are these guys then? Oh, these are like smaller than your pinky. Oh, oh so wow. they're tiny. Oh. Yeah, 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 okay. So um, I'm basically looking at these fish, and they're even harder to spot because they often live amongst all the oyster reefs. Right. So unless you're specifically looking for them, they're pretty hard to find. So wh why look at such small fish instead of some of the bigger fish, and all the game fish that people are looking at all the time? So one thing that we're discovering about these little fish is that they're actually important food sources for the bigger fish that we target. Right. Okay. And they're often that link between all your plankton and your kelp and algae and everything. Right. Um, that actually transfers all that energy to all your snapfish, brim, all the fish that end up on your dinner plate. All right. So this is where we start talking about trophic cascades, I guess. And um, and these little fish are pretty much, if they disappear, what's going to happen? Uh, we should see a decline in some of the fish that we actually commercially interested in in the harbor. Right, okay. So do we actually fish quite a bit in the harbor for commercial fish? Commercial, not so much anymore, but okay. recreational, there's still a booming industry. Oh, wow, okay. Um, in the hundreds of millions. Wow, really? So a fish? Yep. <laughs> really? Everything to do with um, tackle, um, boat hire, yeah, all that. It wow, wow. Millions. Of dollars worth. Yep. Wow, wow, very crazy. So I think we actually have a second image uh, for Shin to kind of explain to us about what's really going on. So let's see if we can get that image up here. Uh, it's always a little bit harder with technology, isn't it? <laughs> let's see. There we go. So this is part of your research then, isn't it? Yeah, so this is part of the Living Seawall Project that okay. we've got going on at the Sydney Institute of Marine Sciences up in Mossman. And here we're actually trying to retrofit um, 3D printed concrete tiles onto seawalls to see if we can make them more ecologically friendly. Right, and so how do these differ from the seawalls that we have out there now? So we're providing little um, pockets, little yeah. pools and little pits for different organisms to use and okay. live in. Um, because we find that that's what's often missing from just flat seawalls. Right. So when we give them a place to shelter, a place for them to forage and eat and things like that, um, we tend to see them come back. Right. So you're actually giving homes to things that are even smaller than the blennies that you're studying, probably things you can't even see. Yeah. So the cool thing about the image um, is that if you look at the top section, we're actually targeting more your algae and your oysters and things right. like that. And the tiles at the bottom end are more for your little fish species because oh, cool. this is in the intertidal so twice a day um, it goes in and out of water. Right. So okay. it makes sense that for the bottom ones because you know fish need water to live everyone has seen Nemo <laughs> <should> hopefully <laughs> yeah, understand that. <laughs> yeah. That. Um, but yeah that's why we put ones targeted especially for fish like towards the bottom. Right. And yeah we target things that tend to do better out of the water longer things like seaweed. Right. Okay. On the upper end. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Excellent. So if you guys have questions about what's going on, you guys can head into Slido. So for you folks at home, I forgot to mention, head to Slido, S-L-I dot D-O, and you, actu you can actually be part of the polls and you can ask questions of the scientists that are on the panel now and be part of the whole day. So make sure you head there and ask questions. And as we go along, I'll pull those questions out and you know, I'll ask all these scientists exactly what you've been craving to know. So thanks a lot, Shin. Now, Georgina, we're going to switch gears. All right. And now, <laughs> you know, we've talked a little bit about ecology, but you are on the other kind of side of science, and yes. you work in physics. Yep, quantum physics, to be specific. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, fair enough. Thank you, because I actually don't know much <laughs> about either of those two <laughs> things. So you're going to have to explain a lot to me as well. So I think we've got an, uh, an image 
for your research. Let's see what we can pull that up there and we can put you on the spot and you can explain things a little bit. Sure thing. But you've been doing quantum physics research for how long? Um, so I'm in my third year of my PhD. Cool. Uh, and I actually did a year of honours before that. So I've done quantum physics really for four or five years now, when you include my undergrad uni. Yeah. Um, yeah. Excellent. So let's pop that image up there again. And before you answer what that is, we're going to ask a little poll mm -hmm. about what people think this thing that you're actually sitting next to is. So we'll grab that poll up there. So what is going on here? So what is Georgina doing? Is she, grab those slido polls, and I believe one of the options is, is this a newfangled milking machine <laughs> to create the, a perfectly textured ice cream? Is this a quantum computer? And I can't remember what that third question is third one is but you can pick that as you guys should be able to see it so you guys have a guess at what you think Georgina is doing there and we'll take a look at the answers to that poll as well oh there we go now we've made it live it <laughs> that's why I didn't make it live there you go the problem with technology it's the wrong one what is going on here <laughs> <Someone voted>. <laughs> <laughs> who knows what's going on here Yeah, where, why isn't it not here? <laughs> what, oh, here it, it's, oh, it's what are these people looking at? But it's just oh. one person. But it's just one person. <laughs> there were other people, I'm sure, in the room at some point looking at it. And it is a quantum computer, an ice cream machine, or a new wave cow milking machine. I like that new wave cow milking machine is actually yeah. getting some votes in there. Because yeah, it does kind of look Who like knows? a new wave well, I always think it looks like a submarine. That's oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you been in a submarine this? before? No, I haven't. Okay, so this is just how you this envision This is my it. idea of submarine from cartoons. Is everyone else thinking it looks like a sub... Has anyone else been in a submarine? No. no. Yeah, I know yeah, they've yeah. got little portholes, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Portholes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, want to tell us what it is? Well, it's a quantum computer, but the quantum computer is actually inside it. So this big it's machine... inside the computer. Yeah, it's inside <laughs> the computer. <laughs> um... So this big machine is called a scanning tunneling microscope. Okay. And it's what we use to build our quantum computers. So the quantum computer is actually just a tiny little chip sitting inside that machine. So what's the purpose of that whole machine? Is it just to cool it down? No, not to cool it down. It's actually to move atoms. So <laughs> we all know atoms make up everything. Everything, yeah, everything yeah. me, you, anything you can think of. Um, if you zoom in billions and billions and billions of times into something, then you can see little dots making it up and those little dots That's are atoms great. you can see the atoms and i can see them yeah That's using that awesome. machine i can see the atoms making up my computer chip and can you see them move around yeah so i can make That's them move awesome. so i can say i want to put an atom here and then one here and one here and i use that to build a quantum computer so what is the best way to put atoms next to one another to make a efficient quantum computer or is there one so there's a bunch of different ways. Okay. Lots of different people in the world are doing different things. Cool. What we're doing is we're using a material called phosphorus right. and a material called silicon. And silicon makes up normal computer chips. So we're right. using one of those normal computer chips, but we're putting some phosphorus in it. And that cool. phosphorus is useful because it can hold information just like a computer does. What? So why is phosphorus so different than some of the other or atoms out there? So phosphorus is special because when you put it in silicon, it wants to hang on to one electron. So electron is one of the parts of an right. atom. Cool, and okay. And it will hang on to a single electron that we can then manipulate. And you can, th that's when you're actually starting to move these electrons and starting to pass information between them. Exactly, yes. Very, very cool. Um, uh, do we, I think we have another slide to show something else from Georgina's research. There is, oh, this is exciting. I see Isabel in the background over there and she's just <laughs> smiling. So I know it's going to be a good one. So let's see, where it is, is it? The pressure is on. The, yeah. <laughs> the pressure is on. Oh, that's right, it's because I have control over all these yeah. things. And I, I am supposed to be doing this. There we go. What is, is these the atoms? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so that is awesome. So this is a picture <laughs> I took using that scanning tunneling microscope, using that big machine. I've taken this picture. And those little dots, the, um, the smallest yellow dots in that picture, are single atoms. So what so are the blue ones? The blue ones are silicon atoms, and the yellow ones are phosphorus atoms. It's easier Very to see cool. the phosphorus ones, but yeah. So, so you're able to just 
pick these up and move them around however you like to put yeah. them. So it's a very complicated machine, but it's basically a little needle that you put close to your surface, close to your right. silicon, and if you apply the right amount of electricity, it can move your atoms. Very cool. And so if I, we chatted very, very briefly about this stuff before, and you told me the first part of your PhD was all about making these bits of things up so you can test them later. Yep. So you've helped build that machine, I assume. Yeah, so I've built quite a few um, little... Uh, quantum computing chips cool. so I've made a, a bunch of them I've got one that I just made last week actually that's um, awesome and I then take them into a different laboratory and I test them to see if I can those little electrons that I've trapped if I can make them move around where I want them to right. and if I can make them send in signals and then send signals back to me very cool see I when I do work I don't work on such a any scale so very just tiny the, steady yeah, hands <laughs> yeah the crazy thing that you can manipulate something so small mm -hmm. that's amazing Yep, so very, exciting. very cool. Um, thank you so much, Regina. So now we're going to switch a little bit again, but not as much as we did from the fish <laughs> to the quantum computing. Now we're moving <laughs> to maths and all things <laughs> fluid. Yes. <laughs> I do enjoy how your eyebrows went up and down on that, so thank you very much. So now, uh, so I had a little bit, so Sophie, uh, you and I know each other yep. for a little bit of time. Um, so I thought I'd have a little bit more fun with yours. This makes me so worried. <laughs> you don't, you don't <laughs> so let's see if I can actually get this thing uh, working properly this time and get on Slido and work on that presentation. I'm and terrified in advance. Oh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. So, so what? So now you, everyone in the audience, you get a chance to uh, have a guess at what's going on here. Oh and yeah, I know it is kind of horrifying. I, I do love that this is what our sneezes do look like. That's so cool. Is it snowing? It is. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I don't think it's snowing. So let's see what's going on here. Now now we're going on the right, uh, right one. Is it <laughs> Sophie getting excited about fluids? Yes. <laughs> is it bad sneezing etiquette or a hilarious joke has been told? So have a vote on what you think it is, folks. And I'm not exactly sure if you have the answer to that. Maybe you do have the answer. Well, that's someone's droplets as they spray <laughs> their saliva and mucus all over the place. That is <laughs> a very attractive thought. Yeah, yeah. But this is how we get sick. Everyone, please cover <laughs> your mouths. This is how we spread germs to each other. Should we be sneezing in in, into your elbow, or if you're a very polite person, yeah. down the top? Right? I find that very weird. I don't like I sneezing. Do, do you do that? I don't like sneezing on my body. I find that really you gross. Don't, you don't have to, Mike. You don't. <laughs> okay, I appreciate that. I think you learned it too much, Sophie. Um, but the reason I wanted to put that up there is because you study fluids. I do study fluids. But you study them completely from a mathematical perspective. I do. And so, I mean, I always like to say, and you know this, that maths yeah. is the language with which we engage with the modern world. We can't understand anything unless we understand maths. What I'm interested in is the maths that describes why fluid does what it does. And when I mean fluid, I mean air, yep. I mean water, I mean mucus, yep. I mean blood, honey, uh, toothpaste. Beer. Beer. Tea. Tea. Coffee. Coffee. All fluids. All fluids. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, and they all behave very, very differently. And what I'm interested in is why fluids go from being nicely well behaved. So if you right. think of like a nice river and you've just got fluid flowing down, right. and you could jump in the river, and you'd just sort of end up at the other end. Right. Why do they go from being nicely behaved to really poorly behaved? So that's chaos, that's turbulence. Right. It's when fluid gets really, really messy, because sometimes we want it to get messy. It if we want to mix something. Okay, okay, fair right, enough. Right, so if I've got two things, I want to mix them. I want to put in a little bit of energy and get these things to go crazy and chaotic and turbulent yep. and mix with each other. If I'm in an aeroplane, yes. what I don't <laughs> want is turbulent fluid coming no, off my no, plane, right? I don't I, like that. I want it to be, so we, when yeah. we say that fluid's nicely well behaved, we call it laminar, and it means that it travels right. in layers. So we want a layer of fluid to move around the wing of the plane, to attach off the back, and then we've got a nice smooth ride. The second that becomes turbulent, it's an it's a nightmare. Everyone's been in a yes. plane which sort of drops. I don't like that. No, I mean I quite <laughs> I do actually. But, um, <laughs> you really? It's like it's like a ride at the show. I you know, know, you're just there, and then all of a sudden you just lose altitude. But the really cool thing about rides at a show is that you're pretty safe. That's just well, yeah. Yeah, but in a plane, you're pretty safe not. in a plane. Well, I'm more safe than walking but down yeah, the street. Yeah, okay, maybe. fair enough. True, but I don't know when you're so high in the air and things are sort of shaking. Yeah, yeah, I guess there's a lack of control <laughs> in a plane that you don't get when, when you walk down the street. Yes, that's yeah. true, because I could choose where I walk, I guess. That's true. But 
So you, you explained very well why we need to actually understand fluid. And so you, I assume you do this in mathematical models. Uh, so I don't actually do any modeling. So I so we have a set of equations called the Navier-Stokes equations. You look at them, they're like a little bit, they look messy, a little bit scary. Yeah. Not really, they're just, if you've heard of Newton's second law, so right. force is equal to mass times acceleration. Yep. They are just a set of equations mm. that describe the force on the particles in the fluid, the mass of the fluid, and the acceleration of the fluid's experiencing. They just look complicated because those are slightly more complicated. Right. So I actually solve those, but I use big supercomputers to do it. Because yes. we get to a point as people that sometimes, as much as we want to, we can't solve things. They are too hard. Computers are very good <laughs> yes, at doing certain are. things. Yes, they are. Yeah, so That's I use, so I do like a little bit, I sit down with equations sometimes, and, you know, use a pencil, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Most of the this time. This magical device. This magical pencil to solve things. Most of the time I use huge supercomputers to solve these problems, and I make really pretty videos <laughs> that show what the fluid's doing. And I also do experiments, which is a bit weird for a mathematician, because I've, if I have theory right. that backs up computational results, that backs up reality, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I like, it's I like, like how you said pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I know what I'm talking yeah. about. Right. So you're largely looking. I, so I th actually, uh, the fact that you work on computers, I remember you brought up a point a while back because you hate the idea of doing maths in your head. I, well, I can't. Not that I can't. Yeah, no, I, no, I know choose, you can. I choose not to. So because calculators are really good at it. That's what you always So I think it, it's important to understand the yes. mathematical process that underlies that. So you have to learn how to add. But once we know how to add, Calculators are quicker and they do it more um, efficiently and also accurately. <laughs> so if you if the, cal the calculator gets it wrong, it's because you've pressed the wrong button. Yes. If I get it wrong, there could be a bunch of loose. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. So it's always a nice check. So do you, and I think it's always you need to understand what's happening and why you can do that. Right. And once you've got that, there are things that exist that do it for you and do it better. So I spend my time answering questions that a calculator or a computer can't. Right. So why not use a calculator or a computer to do the things that they know how to do well? That makes and sense. And I can do the things that they don't know how to do. Yeah, so it's a good teamwork. Yeah. Nice. Like that. So you, guys, you guys are super good friends with you. Do you have a name friends. for your supercomputer? Um, so the, the one... Because um, they usually have names. They do. Yeah, so yeah. I use... There's one called Alice. Okay. I use one called... And then maybe like Lorenz is the other, the oh, other guy that I use. Oh, Lorenz yeah. is like an old maths dude. <laughs> and he did a lot of maths. Yeah. Yes. Um, and and uh, Alice is a, an acronym for something, <laughs> I think. Alice lives in the UK and Lorenz lives okay. at Macquarie. Oh, so okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. So this is... So remember at the beginning, before we started the show, I said I have a little bit of a surprise I'm for you. I'm so <laughs> terrified. I'm uh, no, it's going to be really, really good. So <laughs> we're going to get the other other slide back up there. And this has something to do with fluids, but it also kind of brings in shin <laughs> stuff here. I don't know if everybody <laughs> has... Yes, this, this, this is, is the fish salmon fish. cannon. I love the fish Oh, uh, this is awesome. So shin, why is this... Look, look this is fluid. This is... The <laughs> <laughs> have you not seen this? Is this not awesome? It's popped up on the internet, but I never watched it. Look it's how amazing. far they send it. It's amazing. Consent? Of what's yeah, I, just how do you get cons fish consent? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine what the fish is thinking. I don't know. If I, just, oh. I don't know. Yeah. But the company's called Woosh, and they've created this crazy fish tube. And Shin, you want to take oh. it from here? Look at how comfortable that fish. <laughs> yeah. <is. laughs> well, I love this one. animation. It's no amazing. At all. No. That's that is, laminar. That flow. is yeah. one laminar ride. <laughs> <laughs> This is side. amazing. Yeah. Yes, it's amazing. So I love this graphic as well. Oh, yeah. It is just <laughs> too good. Just in case you didn't know. So yeah, we've built all these dams everywhere, and now the fish can't get over them to breed. So, so I put them in a tube. Put them in a tube. <laughs> but my favorite thing about this, this tube is there's a bunch of dudes at the bottom of it whose job all day is to just grab fish <laughs> and <laughs> shove them in tubes. Like this is the entire, this yeah. is their entire day. Yeah. Hey, Sophie, how's it going? Oh, can you pass me that fish? Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> hey, you had a good oh, day? No yeah, yeah okay. no, like pretty good, yeah. yeah. And then this is it. This is the entire day. It's fantastic. I just, I thought you'd really like I that. really did enjoy that. that and I hadn't seen it before. That is this so is good. magical. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> We've shared that moment. We really have. I'm very, very <laughs> pleased about that. So now we're going to switch one last time to our well, it's a kind of full circle then, isn't it? Because I started with you and corrected it. Yes. So, Dax, how's it going? Good. Thank <laughs> you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dax, your research is something close to my heart, and we do work together. We do. But when you actually start looking for pictures about the research that you do, it's really hard to find relevant photos. I've found this. Yeah, yes. This is a lot of my life is... Is 
looking being sad about this. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's because you can find pictures of atoms, you can find pictures of fish, yeah. laminar flow, but this thing, so let's get this image up here for Dax, and <laughs> we are going to get you to ask what is going, uh, let's see, here we go, and the question is, <laughs> whose fault is it, <laughs> and your <laughs> options are his, obviously. Oh. So everyone vote on whose fault you think it is. <laughs> it's not that exciting to watch live. I'm not going <laughs> to. I know. It's, it can never get past it 100%. Won't change. I know. It's, um, yes, but if we take a look at, at that image, um, it kind of gets a little bit to the, the heart of what you do in some ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I don't really study whose fault it is. No, it's true. Yeah. Um, what I do look at is <laughs> the, the what I do look at is the the stereotypes that people have about women and men, and basically how they're wrong a lot of the time, and why certain people have certain biases, and how that affects everybody's everyday life. Uh, it's pretty much what I do. So there. It's so easy. It's so simple. Yeah. Really. <laughs> Who's, uh, whose fault was it? I don't know. But, <laughs> but ideally, if there were multiple answers, you might have been like making an assumption about whose it was just based on your own life experiences. Yeah. And I'm kind of interested in, yeah, wh why are people making those stereotypes at all? Yeah, yeah because it, it is, uh, the question is a little bit silly, but it does prove a point. Obviously, when you see two people arguing, you know, we often assume that it's his fault. <laughs> and it may be, though, uh, you know, well, but it may not be. That's true. I mean, it could go the other way, too. I feel like um, there's been lots of crazy award shows, yes. things happening, where, you know, someone said something, oh, no, she didn't, or no, he didn't. But, like, a lot of the time, there's multiple people who have done something wrong, yeah. but one person gets the blame. And in my well, research, a lot of the time, it ends up being women who get blamed, Yeah. Um, which is which is weird. Yeah. weird. So your research is a l not quite using computers and maths, not using tiny little atoms or fish, you're kind of using surveys to explore human perceptions and behaviors. Yeah, I put out really big surveys. Um, surveys these days are crazy. Just <laughs> like they're like, you get a bunch of data in no time. I feel for all of you who do harder things than me, because <laughs> I mean, I, I basically make a survey and then I put it out in like a day I get, um, or a couple hours, I get thousands of people to answer. Is it thousands of yeah. people? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I've just made you all feel worse about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could get out of that quickly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Only a little bit. Though. Yeah, yeah. But it's cool because then the things that people say um, can tell me a lot about why they act a certain way or why they have attitudes. There's differences between age groups. You all would say something different to people who are just slightly older than you or slightly younger than you. So, yeah, it's kind of what I do. Look at that. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, and I love that kind of stuff. And I, you know, like I mentioned, you know, I study humans a little bit as well uh, on a different side of things. But, you know, I, I love what Dax is doing. And because it's a really interesting kind of focus on, uh, on a lot of what's happening in media a lot of the time. Uh, and it helps us understand what's kind of going on, which, which I think is really, really cool. Um, so I want to show another picture. Uh, in a second, and I, it'll transition us kind of nicely into the other side uh, of science, which we'll get into um, in, in a second. But this is, yeah, the internet, you know, if you search Dax, yeah. Kelly, <laughs> and UNSW, yeah. you get uh, very few photos. Really? Yeah. Well, I've got to look into that. Yeah, yeah, you get <laughs> one of you doing, competing in a three-minute thesis. Great. Uh, a couple pictures of your headshot. And then you playing the piano. Yeah. Scientists don't have time to play piano. That's what they tell you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was um, a few years ago <coughs> now. I actually w went to the college that's like just right there. And uh, I, I played piano for 13 years or something. And they had this gorgeous piano there for all the people who play piano. There's just something about a nice piano. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, I was at that point. I was performing like a big piece for a big group of people at this fancy event to celebrate uh, university. But cool. in my free time, I like writing music and playing piano when I have a piano. They're very hard to take around. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're big, yeah. right? They're a little bit big. <laughs> yeah. 
you could go for that. What is that? Kitar. Kitar. I love a kitar. Which, yeah, 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 which is an, an unloved kind of instrument. I feel that they need more love. Does anyone have a kitar here? Anyone <laughs> in the audience? I wish. Does anyone have a guitar that they play? Yeah, right. we have a few guitar players, but no kitars. No, no. kitars. Why do you hate yes. kitars? Get onto that. <laughs> yeah. Get that on yeah. the poll. Why do they hate yeah, kitars? Yeah, why, why, <laughs> why, do, why do you hate <laughs> kitars? We can, you, peop, people can <laughs> answer that question, actually. That's right. Um, so, so we do, should we do that question? Why, why do people hate that? Oh, there are questions. Should we, uh, should we head to some of them? <laughs> okay. Okay, let's take a look at some of them. Oh, you started them. Excellent. So that makes it... They're not coming up in my stars. I know. I'm all I have. There's so many to go. Oh, okay. Georgina, this one's oh. for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. About the quantum science. Isn't quantum science about fast objects and how small objects work on a nanoscale? Uh, small, not fast necessarily. Okay. Although a lot of small things are fast. But yeah, quantum, if you hear quantum, a lot of people think like, oh, that's a weird word. What does it mean? It literally just means really small stuff. Quantum physics is what happens when you're looking at tiny things compared to big things right. because physics works a little bit differently when you get to that scale. So I studied that. So when you say physics works a little bit differently, what do you mean by that? So I know it's probably a huge question. It is huge. It? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, without yeah. going into the maths, there's some very <laughs> hardcore maths, but um, things behave differently. So you imagine if you've got a tennis ball, if you throw a tennis ball at the wall, what yep. you're going to do is bounce off and come back to you. If your tennis ball is shrunk down to the size of an electron, so billions right. of sizes smaller, you throw it at the wall, it might bounce back, but there's a chance it'll go completely through the wall. <laughs> and that's something that only happens when you've got really tiny particles, because they have this thing they can do called tunneling. And that means they can pass through things that they shouldn't normally be able to. Very, okay. So that kind of changes the rules yeah, of physics. Yeah, so you get right. weird stuff happening. It doesn't seem like it would make sense. You go, that right. could be true. Right, yeah. okay. So... Okay, well, we'll ask one more question. Then we'll mm -hmm. Why do the atoms need to be moved? So the reason we want to move them is because we want to put these little... I was saying before, you put phosphorus atoms in a silicon chip, right? Right. So these phosphorus atoms, they need to be in very precise positions so that I can control the electrons sitting on top of them. Right. Because if it's in the wrong spot, you can't send necessarily send the signal to it that you want to send. I have to put it in just the right spot so that when I type on my computer and say, send this signal to this electron, it actually reaches it. Right, okay. I'm talking, I have to be to the uh, nanoscale, so wow, okay. size of, uh, you take a millimetre and then you divide it by a billion. Right. Yeah, yeah. and that's, okay. that's nanoscale, it's small. It's so wow. very, it's very, small. That's it's very, very, very small. small. It's, it's not big at all. No, no. <laughs> it's not, it's um, very tiny. <laughs> so that's how like precise I have to be with like putting the atoms together. And, and it's obviously not with a set of tweezers or anything. No, yeah, I mean, this, this scanning tunneling microscope kind of works like a set of tweezers, but it's a oh, bit cool. more complicated than that. Okay, yeah. neat. So we've got another question. I think I heard glass is a fluid. It shatters. Can other fluids like water shatter? Not in a, not in a liquid state, I wouldn't think. <laughs> yes, yes, fair enough. So that I, makes sense. So I mean, you know, so obviously when we freeze water, it yep. becomes ice, but then it's a, it's a different material. Like the structure yes. is very, very different. But um, I would say that, so generally, all fluids would flow. So gas, all gases, all liquids, they flow. They flow in different ways depending on what you do to them. Sometimes you have to impart some kind of energy to make them flow. Right. So I mentioned toothpaste before. So you know if I have a tube of toothpaste and I hold it at the end without the top on, it stays in there, right? Like yeah. it doesn't move. If I apply a force to it by squeezing it out, it's what we call a shear thinning fluid. So if I apply a shear force, then it flows right. because it's a fluid and then I can put it on my toothpaste. Oh, and there are other okay. things that are shear thickening. On your toothbrush. On my toothbrush because okay. if I put toothpaste on, on my your toothpaste, toothpaste. <laughs> that's a whole lot of toothpaste and nothing really to do with Will it. Will it ever end? Will it ever <laughs> end? Yeah, 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 it's just circular. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so yeah. I'd usually, yeah, you're right. I'd probably usually put it on my toothbrush to wash my teeth. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dax, I sometimes lie on surveys. I'm embarrassed or just having fun. Can you tell? Can I tell? <laughs> uh, I hope you're not lying because, <laughs> and you're ruining what I think is happening. No, you're not, you're not, you're not. but you are. And uh, normally I can't tell, but sometimes people do weird things. Um, 
if you write funny things and like open answer questions, I usually catch you and I laugh as well, unless it's mean, in which case I cry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, generally, no, it's really hard. That's one of the major problems with studying like psychology or anything with survey data is because just like in our surveys where, you know, hopefully people might know what the answer is, people are like, ha, that answer is funny or something, do that. And I appreciate the humor, but uh, it's hard to pick apart. Is that serious? Is it not serious? How do we know? And the answer is, I don't know. I don't. Yeah. You can't tell. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. fair so, enough. Yeah. yeah, well, it's nice when people are actually a little bit of on, uh, honest in the surveys because it helps you understand the, the world a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, it turns out that the people who, who are answering weirdly are a minority. So yes. if the survey's big enough, you kind of iron out those people. Yeah, and you've got enough you get the largest sample size, so those kind of fall by the wayside. Exactly. Yeah. The honest people are good. I like honest people. <laughs> yeah. But nice. also, I like funny people. So. Yeah, yeah. So it's a hard kind of toss up there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we're going to shift gears a little bit. And now we're going to get you in the audience here and folks at home to play along on a game called Cat Burglar. So hopefully, you've downloaded that game. If not, head down to your Android App Store or the sorry, the Google Play Store or the iOS App Store, and download a game called Cat Burglary. All in one word. Uh, it's, it's all free to download. And make sure when you do download it, press that little button on the upper left-hand corner. It's a little shadowy person. Press that and type in the code SSFA19 for Sydney Science Festival Afternoon 19, all in lowercase. And that's going to make sure all that data is aggregated together so we can take a look at what's going on. So, you know, I'm going to actually get you guys to play it as well. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, because <laughs> we can, you can, we can play and you, we can talk about it while everyone else is doing it. So you can grab it on my phone. Oh, oh, oh you got, are yeah. you going to, oh, perfect. Yeah, that's great. Before. Excellent. So, so. We're so this is a game we created a little bit ago, which I think is a little bit uh, quite fun, but I don't want to tell you the purpose. So you guys all start the game. Uh, you are a pizza delivery rectangular prism, of course, because you're not a rectangle. Right. Uh, because that's a 2D shape. So you are a rectangular prism, Love and it. you're. Yeah, I know. I thought. Yeah, you know, gotta get be accurate in science. Why right? not? Yeah. If we can be accurate, why not be accurate? That's exactly yeah. it. So you're pizza delivery. Rectangular prism, and your job <laughs> is to deliver pizzas. So I can, let's, see, let's take a look. Door. What is it? Yeah. Uh, okay, I need you to do four deliveries for me. These ones are important. So no fooling around. All right. <laughs> I'll pay attention. No. So go ahead. Okay. So uh, next door is the next door store. Okay. Next door door store. So I'll take a look. Go through that and follow along door. at what Tony's telling you to do. Uh, and your goal is to deliver pizzas to the various places that you are going to be visiting. Ooh, nice. um, make sure to keep a lookout in what's going on and see if you can find those pizzas that Tony wants you to find. So this is, I really like the party dude. <laughs> party friend. Hey, anybody see my keys? <laughs> Where could they be? I don't know. Where are they? Where, I don't know. I where are <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do love that that dude in the corner over there has got these pretty sweet shades. <laughs> and now we're going to the second spot. Mr. Dad. Yeah, 68 is it? Yeah. responsible line. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my address. Oh, is it? There we go. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so Now everyone's going to be visiting you there. <laughs> so we've got the little kids in the background. Nice delivery uh, to Mr. Dad. Yeah. Responsible what a yeah. Delivery. He's a really good dad. Yeah. He's just kind of delivering pizzas. Ooh, it's one I of those suburbs where every house looks night. the same. Yes, I know. It kind of <laughs> town homes. It is. is so they're going to just ask you questions. Oh, yeah, there is a pizza there. There's something there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a pizza there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Just keep going. Just keep, kind of keep it in your mind. You know, you're just going to just let it uh, I have a bad feline about this. <laughs> <laughs> We'd I need like a good pun. I'm responding very I well to it. this game. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I love a good pun. She, you know, you know I'm not he, yeah, cats, me, you know, but you know, one of our designers loves cats, so that they come be, have become central to this part of the game, as you can kind of tell. Right, oh. I can find you. I have a 
So yeah. More dog person myself. Are you more of a dog? Pe- yeah, no, fair enough. I kind of understand. I'd, I'd like a micro pig, but yes, we've yeah, talked about difficult. this. If they're you, so cute. If you get them from the wrong breeder, they're just piglets. Which go and they turn into the pigs. Big, huge and that's, pigs. Yeah, not and you reasonable to keep in a backyard. No, pig. yeah, their oh, councils yeah. have a, a rule. rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You speak like this has happened to you, Sophia. Well, like they, I, I mean, how it. often do they check? Because we had a sheep growing up that I think we weren't allowed to oh. have. Oh, really? In the backyard, like a backyard in your city? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Mum had a friend who was a farmer, and the sheep <coughs> didn't have a mum, and it needed. <laughs> the, it was a lamb, and it needed someone to look so after. So you brought it, it home. That's yeah. amazing. Oh, oh yes! Now you get to the part. You blow you your mind. Are you allowed oh, to have that logo? you've been. What was that? Are you allowed to have that logo? You I don't know. Sure? It's not really a logo. It's more <laughs> just like a yeah. terrible drawing of a uh, of true. a Game of Thrones <laughs> lion, <laughs> or, or what was that dog? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there you go. The wolf. Oh no. Oh yes. Oh, oh this, <laughs> this is the hard part. Oh. When you're actually picked up to by Where? the cops. Oh. This is so hard. So just imagine if you were at the scene of a crime. Now you have oh, to put have that to whole remember. crime back together. Mm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yes, but of course you weren't looking for the things that he's asking about because you were looking for pizzas. Oh, oh so yeah. <laughs> The groaning coming from my right is incredible. Oh, I'm really bad at this. No? I did see the keys. <laughs> I do oh. remember that. Not very sure. No. <laughs> So this is really. Did you see the yeah. hand drawn yeah. note? Ah, no. oh, yeah. I'm not I even convinced about my own. What I I'm am. When I they got show one. it to me. Oh, <laughs> did you? There you go. See, so this, so this happens all the time. Mm. Especially, we see all the crimes. We see. Uh, hey, this is different. The, was mm. were the keys in a different? No. Oh, oh I don't. I don't. That was know. a different house. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Which oh. house are we talking about? No, we're talking about that uh, the frat house. The frat house. I don't remember which one. Yeah, that was the first oh, house. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a frat house. Yeah. So this is it, right? All, all our memories start mixing together, and it's yeah. really hard to remember something yeah. properly. I can't remember and this is kind of what this game is getting at. So I'll, hopefully, you guys are slowly getting to the game. We're going to see a little bit of the data oh. coming up very soon. Um, yeah, if you, we'll put it up. We'll put it up oh. on the TV here, so oh. for folks. <laughs> oh, I'm doing really badly. I did poorly. <laughs> I'm really not doing very well at this. So you guys will get the to frat see. Frat house didn't have plant. Frat people didn't keep look after plants, <laughs> did they? I don't know. That's a good question. Oh. I think that's a stereotype. Yeah. I don't know how I feel. Probably stereotype. It. Hey, Dax. Da- a stereotype yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Dax is really, really. I'm really it. upset about how poorly I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I we can f- refresh that over there. The only thing I'm confident about is I'm. When it, asks you, <laughs> yeah, exactly. when it asks you, are you I sure, phone, I question everything I've thought about myself as a person. Well, yeah. this, this brings up a really interesting kind of point. Because yes, if, you were, phone. If, you, if you were if you picked up by the police, right, that's what you're, asking, you're being asked about. right? You know, What happened at that scene of the crime? What's going on? And you have to answer those questions. And it's not really easy, is it? Um, I haven't actually seen How to Make a Murderer. Oh, okay. But I assume that it's... Have mostly you kind to, of about that. Um, yes. Listen to serial. Yeah. Yeah. And it's oh, very much. They like have a that thing at the start that. where yeah. they ask people, "Where were you on this day? What were you eating? What yeah. were you doing?" Yeah. And show that no one can remember. Especially when it was yes. like years ago. And especially yeah. when nothing That's significant happened on that day. And then the oh, guy, yeah. if he hadn't murdered someone, then of course he wouldn't remember because it wasn't an interesting day. Exactly. Yeah. So yes. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah. I yeah. don't like when people ask me, "How was your weekend?" Because I am like. You blank. I don't think I had a weekend. <laughs> and then I remember what I did, and I'm kind of disappointed in my story. And <laughs> it's just a real emotional <laughs> roller coaster there. Yeah. So I, I would really love to pull up the data on this. So hopefully you guys are over here all done. Take a look at what's going on. So now I know there's a lot of graphs, but we're going to focus on the one in the upper left. But before we do that, did, you, did anybody, even you guys in the audience, did you guys notice the types of questions that you were being asked? So did you notice any kind of differences in wording? And then you kind of noticed it a little bit, yes. Georgina. And do you, do you remember what that was? Well, there were some that were like, um, they asked, was there a, uh, they asked about something I had seen, but they asked about it in a different position. Yes. So they said, did you see the keys on the table? And yes. they weren't on the table or vice versa. Yeah, so that's a leading question. Yeah. Mm. So that police officer in that situation is trying to get you to answer this by him 
either giving you a positive bait or a negative bait. So in your instance, it was in the wrong place. That's a negative bait. Mm -hmm. Well, if it was, if you picked the spot that it actually was in, uh, do, you, uh, do any of you guys remember, sometimes they ask you, do you remember the phone on the wall? And that's actually where the phone was. Yeah. So that's a positive bait. So that's kind of reinforcing a memory while this is making you question your memory. So let's see how, pull up those data really quickly and let's see how everyone kind of did. So if we look at, did the type of question affect whether people got it right? And if we look at those, those pink bars, that's when you got it wrong. <laughs> so, a lot, you know, it's a really, really hard thing that you guys were doing, trying to remember something when you weren't actually being told to remember exactly how it's supposed to be. You're just going along delivering pizzas, right? I think we just got the wrong person convicted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I think I just put someone in jail. But, but, th but take a look, if you look at the bait negative, that's the one on the le all the way on the left, you know, you got that right less often. But if you look at the neutral question in the center, when they would ask you, do you remember the phone? Was there a phone in that room? And you said yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You were more likely to remember it correctly. Yeah, because I wasn't pressured into thinking about where it was or not. Exactly. I was just going, yep, there was a phone. Exactly. And that, now you can imagine what kind of an important role this would play in, you know, court cases. Mm. When, you know, you've got, you've got uh, lawyers and judges, sorry, lawyers, not judges, judges just listen. <laughs> lawyers who are, who are actually you know, forcing and pressuring you to answer a question. Mm. You know, all your memories start being kind of questioned. And you can see that kind of here. Yeah, because they want you to describe the narrative that they want to hear, which means that exactly. they can ask certain things that then push it in that direction, which is bad. Which is bad. Which is bad. And, and <laughs> our, our research right here that you guys did right here shows why that's actually bad. Because by those... Questions by that police officer asking, baiting your questions, you actually did more poorly. You second guessed yourself. And so that's an important thing to understand. So we can have a, a bit of an understanding of how our brains work because of that. So let's go back to those data again and let's take a look at that second graph. And we can see so, what conf was the confidence affected by the type of question? And again, it was. When that bait negative question was in there, you second guessed yourself mm -hmm. and you're, you've got it incorrect more often, but you did much better when it was positively baited and neutral. So you're much more confident when you were asked about, Dax, do you remember that, the key that was, in? do you remember seeing some keys? Absolutely. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You did a great 100%. job. 100%. <laughs> you did a really great job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that really affects kind of what's going on. I think that's kind of really cool. So let's go ahead and put the data out there one more time, because this is actually really fun for me because we haven't played this game before. And I actually haven't had a, an opportunity to play with a lot of students. So this, I'm actually seeing these data for the first time as well, which I think is really cool. So on the bottom left, we said, did the object affect people's memory? So we can take a look at the different objects that you were looking at. And what's the thing on the bottom left? That one keys. is keys. So everybody remembered or the keys really, really well. And what, Shin, do you remember where the keys were? Yeah, where? <laughs> Go for it. Was it on the table in your living room? Were, yeah. they, were they? Yeah. Yeah. They were, were they? They were, they were on the oh, they? On the coffee table. <laughs> they're, in the on the, they're on the coffee table, not on the counter. Yeah. Yes. But it asked yeah. if they were on the counter, and I was very confused. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and there you go. There. So the keys were, you know, something happened, you saw the keys, so it was really easy to remember. Some of those other objects that were up there on in our graph, they were a little bit more difficult to remember. Pull that graph up one more time. So we had a really bad time remembering. What was that third thing Literally down there? no one remembered. Yeah, <laughs> nobody remembered oh, the clock? anything yeah. about yeah. the clock. Oh. They, were, they weren't talking about the clock. They were talking about the keys. Yes, had yes. had the little guy go, dude, where's my keys? Yeah. yeah. So you can kind of see when something is actually brought up, yeah. you actually remember it a little bit better, which I think is really cool as well. So and then we've got that one last uh, figure up on there. and then, did the order affect people's memory? So that's the order of things that you were presented and asked about from first to sixth thing. And uh, literally no one remembered the first thing <laughs> that they were asked. It's, it was happened way long ago. That was like six things ago. Uh -huh. I don't remember anything about that. But we we're a little bit better about remembering things in the middle and kind of got worse again about the things near the end, which I think is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, by this kind of game, we can have an idea of what's going on and how our brains 
gather information and why we remember certain things better than some other things, which I think is kind of really cool. And even though it doesn't actually do anything with any of the research you guys are doing, it's science. It's mm. science. Yeah. Science is fun. Science is fun. You know what it did make me think, though? Yeah. You know, like, when you forget something and your mom's like, did you leave it on the counter? And you're like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> that is a total <laughs> leading question. I would it be is. like, well, yeah. now that you've specified the counter, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> but then she has a mum look as she finds it. That's right. Maybe Sorry. she puts it the there. True. And then Maybe she goes, no, it was in my pocket the whole time. It's like a magic trick. She is kind of like a Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Mum looks a, yeah, superior mm. to anybody else looking. You mean like finding things? Yes. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. Mum looks are very good. Dad looks, oh, no, you know, come on. My dad looking is pretty good, actually. I'm pretty good at finding things my kids never see even when they're right in front of them. <laughs> it is embarrassing. <laughs> so so that's a little bit of science. <laughs> that So thank you, everyone. You here for helping us collect those data, and you uh, in in the ether helping us collect those data as well. So now we actually have a little bit of an opportunity to ask a few questions. So if you have any questions about the game that we've played, or that uh, about the science that the folks here do, let's head to that and ask. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see here. We've got some that's upvoted. You know why did you guys go down the career path of science. Shin, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Putting you on the spot. <laughs> Answer them, why do you like science? I don't know, it's just something that always came more naturally to me. Yeah, okay. Um, and for me, personally, when I was six, my I grew up at the base of a hill. Yeah. Um, learned to swim in a pool, a tiny pool. <laughs> Um, but when I was six, I got taken to the east coast of Malaysia, and I snorkeled for the first time. Okay. And ever since then, I was like, yep, marine. That's what you have to do. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So efficient. And it wasn't was so much like I wanted to do science. It was like, what do I need to do to swim with this <laughs> for, <laughs> as a job? As a job. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, I, I do like that way of thinking. What, what do I need to do to have fun in the ocean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How, how do I get people to pay me to get myself in the ocean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's yeah. I actually like that way of thinking about science because science is a lot about doing fun things. Mm -hmm. Do you actually get paid to swim with fish, like snorkeling? Or yeah, it's definitely not as picturesque as <laughs> <laughs> considering I'm sort of in the water west of the Harbour Bridge. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. fair yeah. enough. Gotcha. Yeah, um, but. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, it's very different from what I had in my head as a kid with like 20 meter visibility, all these right. beautiful fish, and then you get in and it's like you can barely see your hand. <laughs> right. Is that, is, yeah, is this that hard to see in the harbor? I guess with all the ferries going around all the time, it stirs a lot of things up. Yeah, it's. It's gonna yeah. be pretty. Have you seen, yeah. have you seen sharks? Uh, see, that's the issue. Um, <laughs> I would much Are rather. Are you pleased about that or? I would love to see, to see a shark. Yeah. Um, the only issue is in that I kind mean, of like, water, if you see it, it's probably too late. Well, it depends <laughs> what it is, right? They're not all jerks. Yeah. Sure. The ones, I think the ones in the harbour. They are, and they're like little bull sharks and stuff. They are, yeah, those are, bull sharks yeah, are very friendly. No. They tend to come that close. Yeah. And yeah, if they okay. do, I prefer them not to. <laughs> <laughs> no shark. No. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, fair yeah, enough. They, they can definitely sense you much quicker than you can see them. That's <laughs> so, true. Fair. so, so this is an interesting kind of thing you bring up, Shin. You've got, you had an experience that actually shifted your perspective on what you found interesting. But I, Georgina, I want to ask you. Like, it's not like you just went down to your local kind of quantum computing lab <laughs> and just happened to. Hey, I wonder what those guys are doing over there. Uh, how is it no, that you fell I into no this? I had no idea. I had yeah, no idea okay. what quantum computing was a few years ago. Um, I didn't have the same thing as Shin. I didn't have an experience that made me want to be a scientist. Yeah. I was kind of one of those kids that always wanted to be a scientist, but I didn't know what kind of science. Yeah, okay. I was walking around as about a five or six year old telling everyone, I'm going to be a scientist when I grow Really? Up. Yep. That feels very rare. Yeah, I don't know. I was a wee very little cool. nerdy kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something to be proud know, of. I didn't know what kind of science. I, yeah, I was okay. going to go into medical science because my mum's a nurse, and so I learned right. stuff through her. Of course. Um, and then I was going to go into chemistry, and then I came across this area of quantum physics and How I, did you come across it? So I came across it through a, a lecture I had at uni. So I'd studied maths and physics at uni and I 
literally just chose that because I was good at maths and physics at school. Right. That was that was. Yep. I didn't know what else to do. I went. I want to do science. I'll do the two two things I'm best uh, at. Yeah. Um, and I came across this uh, lecturer, and she said, "Hey, do you want to join my um, my lab because you're really good at maths, and we use lots of maths here." That's so very cool. That's good. And um, so I joined, and I got to this area of quantum computing, which is fun because it's a mixture of physics, maths, chemistry, computing. So yep. all these different areas that I'd been interested in, and I couldn't figure out before how to combine them. And so this was a way that I could combine them all. Um, cool. And do Lots of different areas of science. No, that's very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, let's see if we will ask uh, one more. Oh, Dax. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is it hard to be objective when you talk about stereotypes? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's actually a really big skill that I've had to work on and I'm still working on. Um, so you have to practice it. It's not. Yeah, and depending on who you talk to, they think something differently. And a lot of the time, like for example, a lot of the stuff I study is um, about why women maybe aren't thought about in the best light in some circumstances. Like for example, like there's a huge thing about women being scientists and how <laughs> we need that to be a huge thing, or just minorities being scientists and how no one had that perception for so long yep. until recently. And um, it's just interesting because I personally have never found that, but then there's some people who think that really um, it's a huge problem. And me being a male scientist studying this stuff, I'm already a bad guy, right. <laughs> and so uh, I don't mean like I don't mean to come across that way. So I spend You're a lot of my time thinking yeah. like, how can I, you know, talk about this in a way that I can associate with these problems? Um, why are they problems? What are the things I don't understand? And then when it comes to being objective about them, some things make me really mad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's mostly the most important thing I think my stuff does is looking at it as what are the pressures that people are under to make them think certain ways. Right. And when you think about it more like that rather than they're wrong or they're right, it's, right. it's a lot easier to do that. Right, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. That's really neat. Um, so I think, well, so I, you know what, I'm, I'm going to ask you that same question we asked Shin and Georgina. You know, were you always good at maths and that's why you started doing maths? See, I don't believe there is such thing as good at maths. Whoa. I believe that maths yeah. is a skill that you acquire when you work at it, just like when you learn to read. Play the piano. To play the piano, you learn to write, you learn to do all these things. And so I, I, whenever I get asked, you know, why are you so good yeah. at maths? If we think about the fact that if I started, let's call it my formal maths education when I first went to primary school at the age of five, yeah. it means that I've been doing maths for 26 years. If you do anything for 26 years, you would you be very good at, good at it. So I, I mean, I think for me, I just always really liked understanding how things worked. Right. But then I actually came to a crossroads when I was picking my year 11 and 12 subjects. Right. And I was either going to go the full kind of arts route right. or the full science route. And I actually only ended up picking sort of all of the maths and physics and everything because it just seemed like it would keep my options more open. So I wasn't, I wasn't I was even, the same, yeah. I really? wasn't necessarily, yeah, okay. you know, so I didn't, you know, I didn't dream of being a mathematician yeah. as a young child. At one stage, I wanted to be a marine biologist. At one stage, oh, I there you go, Shin. Shin. Yeah, there you At go. one stage, I wanted to be an astrophysicist. At one stage, I wanted to be an Olympic sprinter. So, like, I just, it just, <laughs> I think, I think for me, it's like you just should do the things that you enjoy. Yeah, fair enough. And they will require various amounts of work. But yeah, I don't think you know. I, I was never bad at maths, but then I always tried very hard. Yeah. Because I that was that's just me. I just <laughs> like to try hard at things. If I'm going to do them, why not just do them? You know, well. So there are but some. But how about if you're bad at the things that you're trying hard to be? Do you quit or do you? Not dive head first even yeah, harder. Yeah, so there are some things. So even if I think back to high school, there were always there was always some kinds of maths that yep. was better that, uh, than the other kinds. Geometry was one of these things that you know you, they'd give you like a bunch of circles and lines and something they're like here's this angle, work yeah. out that, and it didn't matter what I did, I'd get every <laughs> single piece of information about these weird shapes except the thing I needed. Yeah. So I just had to try much much harder at that than yeah. say I don't know calculus or something else we so did. So geometry just, was just like, meh. I was just like, well, I don't know, it's approximately <laughs> 30 degrees. Like, you know, and so there are just some things that I think... I do like that. Does it matter if it's 30 or 31? No. No. I mean, what, 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 what does this, this shape is not, you know, important in terms of the scheme of the world. I don't know. What a silly question. Oh, I do love but that. No. That's great. So I think, yeah. yeah, I think there are some things, and there are even yeah. things that I do these days that, like, I'm, 
you know, if I'm worse at something than something else, then I just have to work a bit harder at the thing <laughs> I'm bad at, and I might never be as good. But like, there's no, you're not going to improve if you don't try. No, it's true. That's yeah. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I wish I would be a very good piano player if I just yeah. never played the piano. Yeah. Is that how it works, Dax? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> sure. Sure. Believe in yourself. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> totally believe in yourself and yeah. everything will work out. So I think this is a really good transition uh, into some other questions about these folks. But rather than me asking questions about them and them answering them, what I'd like to do now is play another little game called Name That Scientist. So what we're going to end up doing is bringing up questions on the polls, and you guys will poll... And you will have to guess which one of these four scientists we're talking about in this question. So let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Well, let's see how well you guys were paying attention. So uh, do this again. Uh, we'll switch to the poll, which it's not doing. But who out of the four people here dreamt of being an Olympic sprinter, <laughs> then decided they liked basketball better but realized they were too short to play basketball for the Olympics, so chose to be a scientist instead. <laughs> if you were listening, I think everyone, you kind of know the answer to that one already, <laughs> but we'll let people vote. Um, and yes. Oh, what? Zero. Sorry, Dax and <laughs> Shane. <laughs> you look like you could be sprinters, sorry. Yeah, yeah, you guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone oh, felt oh, sorry oh, for oh, Shane. Zero. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> Dax, I'm sorry. You don't That's have okay. a sprinter physique. I, you look I would more like argue middle, like middle long distance, I would say. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. It's a lot coming from you. Yeah. Who, of course, wanted yeah. to be a sprinter. I did, yeah. I was quite into athletics, so I did 100, 200 if they made me discus, javelin, and long jump for my... Oh. All the ones where you have to be fast for a short amount of time. I'm very good at being fast for a short amount of time. I have zero endurance. Yeah, I know. I'm not like no was endurance. Was it little well. athletics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then up to just like the senior competition. Yeah. Okay, so you did. Because I was going to wonder, there's no way you do discus in little athletics. Oh, I you did know discus you do, in yeah. little athletics. No, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. I did javelin as well. With the yeah. What? Yeah. That's wicked. Yeah. Yeah. Just throw out like a tennis ball. That's what, that's what you mentioned before, but it seems very wrong when it's got a very long. Theory like yeah shapes <laughs> or a spear like you're spearing someone I don't know, yeah, I don't know. is that like, just pretend you were spearing someone there you go yeah yeah, yeah okay all right well let's, let's go before this you know gets into a scary conversation let's go to that next question and that next question is who had to apologize to a lot of people okay then I gotta say scientists you have to poker face this because we people here can't you know. Yeah. You know, here have an advantage over the people in the audience uh, back at home. So, who had you to apologize to a lot of people for breaking an almost one million dollar piece of equipment? So, have a guess. Uh, Sophie, Dax, Shin, your 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 mask, your snorkel masks aren't very expensive. So, I don't think uh, I think that's a fair guess. Dax, do you even use equipment? Paper. Computers. I do, I do use paper. Uh, yeah, computers. I don't know. Yeah, that's it's crazy. equipment, I, like, I can also you use, use supercomputers just for yeah, yeah. processing lots of data. Yeah, yeah. you could. And you use supercomputers. Yeah. But I, if I remember correctly, the answer is... <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so what happened? Uh, so those... Um, <laughs> The pictures we had up before of me with the scanning tunneling microscope. That yes. That equipment I use. Um, so if you turn the wrong, <laughs> you turn the wrong valve, they've got lots of valves on them, and the reason they do is because inside there is um, a vacuum, what we call, so it right. sucks all the air out of it, and it's really hard to keep all the air out of it because um, uh, air starts to leak in through. Really? So we've okay. got these really hardcore pumps that pump all the air out, and there's less air in there than you'd find on the surface of the moon, for instance, right? Right. Um, but if you open the wrong valve, you let all the air from the room in, which I did, and it takes about. Two weeks to oh, get that wow. back in working order, because uh, I two weeks the to pump out all the air. Yeah, yeah because you have to. Uh, you don't just have to pump it out. You have to heat it up to about five hundred degrees because um, oh, wow. in a vacuum all the stuff sticks to the walls, right? And you have right. to get it all off. So that's crazy. Yeah, so I had to. 
say sorry to lots of people. So it wasn't it wasn't completely broken. Like it was fine <laughs> after two weeks. It just took us two weeks to get it back working again. So and what, and were we kind of right with that amount that that piece of equipment cost? Yeah, they're about one to one point five million dollars. Yeah. Those um those just SPMs. a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. Um, in every movie with scientists, especially action movies, yes. if the wrong button is pressed, it explodes. Did yeah, it explode? No. <laughs> It did not explode. It just made like a gentle <laughs> whoosh sound, and I went. Oh, oh gentle! Oh. That was you. That sounds very oh, no. soothing. No, I, I, I just heard oh. this. I just heard this. So glad I broke this machine. Went, oh my god! <laughs> wow. That's the sound of breaking a lot of money worth. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You think it would just like That's smash right, so and crash? No, nah, no. Nah, it's a bit more durable than that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, fair enough. Let's see what we got next. That next question we've got is. Who likes to browse cheap cars for sale online and imagine how they could modify them oh. in their spare time? So who it. is that? I love it. I'm I do love it. I'm seeing a little bit of gender 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 gender. Oh, This is it's the bit. stuff you study, Dax. This is all data for me. This, this is, is oh, this is science right here. I love yeah. it. That's right. <laughs> so, Dax, is that you? It's actually not me. Oh, uh, it <laughs> is. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> So what kind of cars? Um, considering I'm still a student, um, cheap ones. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But you got a spe- is there a specific brand you always kind of have your eye on, just waiting for um, that price to go down? Not really. I'm not so fussed about brands. Yeah, okay. More, at this stage, I'm more, what can I buy where I don't really care enough about them, where if they blow, I don't really feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> I do love this thought process. <laughs> How does one actually go through when you're scrolling through? Mm, yeah, if I crash that one, trash it, that's fine. Yeah, it's more just, you know, here's a theoretical budget. Yeah, 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 okay. Spend some time on Gun Tree car sales, have a look at what's there. I love it. That's a fantastic <laughs> hobby. That, you, you girls don't understand that clearly. The audience doesn't feel. I don't even yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. The what's, a, what's a car? I've yeah. never yeah. heard of one what before. Do you, what do you do to them? Like, how do you fix them up? Is it magic? Or how do you. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Stereotypes are the worst. See, this is why. Obviously, you guys know what cars are. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. Who is a fan of AFL cricket watching Queer Eye for the straight guy? Dax, I like that you are... I'm learning a lot about myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie's... Up, oh, no, okay. Uh, this is this is getting close. Ooh. Not really. Dax like is really Dax out there. Dax is just apparently the answer to everything. Queer Eye yeah. is hey. a great show. I it will put that out there. It is such a good show. So See, I haven't watched it. I'm really okay yeah. the, the new, like, the new Queer Eye The new one is much better. Oh, yeah, it's much, much, much Oh, really? Better. Okay. Yeah, Cricket's yeah, good. good. AFL's good. Yeah, I'm okay with this. Yeah, but... Yeah, okay. So, yeah. So, who is it? Yeah, okay, yeah. there we go, yeah. So, so did you ever watch the original Queer Eye? Uh, I did a bit, I didn't really get it, to be honest. Okay, I so I was, th- how was this young. How was this one different? Oh, it's so nice, they're all such lovely people, and it's really, <laughs> it's also, it's super inclusive as well. Ah, uh, like okay. from all walks of life, and yeah. all genders, and all everything. Yeah, okay, okay. So it's, it's, so many TV shows are all like, horrible things happening to people. Yes. It's just a bit of I agree. niceness. It is yeah. so nice. It's it, so, it makes you feel so happy. Exactly. The first like episode of the no first bad. season, I cried. Ooh, oh. Did you really? Not I love a small this. Amount. I love this. Always. His I life was changed. watching this. It's I was so changed. changed. They changed, changed so their lives. lives. You've got no, you've clothes got to do it. it's and true. fashion and hair, yeah. obviously. And also, yeah. like and we're hair. building, we're rebuilding confidence. We're like working okay. out yeah, where we belong in the world. We, it's what it is. Yeah. But no, when you say <laughs> we, do you mean you guys as viewers as yes. well? Yeah. <laughs> I think I may have to start watching. It's this. amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. you watch as well, Shin. I've seen yeah. Dang, yeah. I have you to start. Do it, yeah. Ah, I'm jumping in. Yeah, I'm jumping in. What are we? I can't even remember what I'm watching now. Oh, what's it called? Dear White People, which is quite enjoyable. Oh, I haven't watched that. It's I funny. am quite enjoying that show. It's, it's also about people finding funny. themselves. It is really yeah. funny. But I'm going to, I'll give it a go. Yeah. Is anybody out, I'm curious, does anybody here watch Queer, watch. Queer Eye? Yeah? Yeah, there we go. Who anyone cried? in the audience? Yeah, anyone just a few. Do you guys feel the same way? It's this kind of lovely, kind of include. Yeah, okay. So it is, right? So good. Yeah, so okay, good. all right, all right. Well, there we go. Let's, let's go watch uh, yeah. it now. Yeah, yeah no, I, no, 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 after the show. After the show. We can watch it, we can watch it on after the show. Okay, um, so this is a, an interesting kind of Who likes to crochet? <laughs> Dax. <laughs> who likes to crochet that. and watch horror it. movies? Someone is just like, Dax, Dax, Dax. No, I, Someone's <laughs> just a big fan of you. Clearly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's really cool to have a fan. Yeah, could be yeah. online. <laughs> I do feel, I gotta be honest, I do feel, I wish I was, my name was up there. 
Yeah, true. This is all, it seems like it's all about you. This is really fun. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Like yeah. Oh, surely she. And we're finding, yes. we're, we're finding out about our scientists. Yeah, and we are. Oh, see, I'm disappointed so that no one thinks I can crochet. I think it's so this is this yeah. is just 44 yeah, people shame. voted for this, you know. Wow. Hey, this is you know we're getting a lot of votes here. This is real. No, we're, it's still going up. Oh. So you know, oh, that's oh. quick. Oh, uh, you know what we've got to say here is, Dax, it's not you. I wish I could do either of those things. You don't. You can't watch <laughs> horror movies. I'm not particularly good with horror now. Not really. And we're gonna find out who that person is. It's. Yes! Wow. It's me. I do love that you love horror movies. We do have to go watch a horror movie. I love horror movies. And most people don't like them. Apparently people don't like being terrified for fun. How weird is that? I don't get My it. brother also loves horror movies. Yeah, see, I was, I was raised on horror movies. Were like you me. really? So I like okay. I liked some of the old, like, the really the old, old classic ones. ones. Yeah, 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 I like yeah, yeah. 30s, like 40s, but like all the way. So my favorite horror movie is the 1960s Village of the Damned. Yes, movie. okay. Like nice. Barbara Shelley and George Sanders. Yeah. And yeah. like the creepy little kids and it's like black and white and their yeah. eyes glow and they so make good. you do horrible things. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. And then okay. they remade it and it was rubbish. So if you've yeah, seen the new yeah. Village of the Damned, like don't judge me because the new one is, well, it's not even new yeah. anymore. <laughs> it was in the 90s or something, <laughs> newer. That's so new. Rubber, rubbish. But yeah, like... Anything recent that you've just loved? Um, okay, well, so I think... so. New horror is hard because we've got a lot of effects now and we don't have yeah. to try very hard mm. with storytelling. I think um, a lot of the, the Asian horror, so the Japanese and Ooh. Thai horror and Korean horror, mm. like all of the newer stuff they do is terrifying. Really? Like proper scary. It's really, really good. Interesting. Um, the most recent sort of mainstream one that I saw, and again, it was still kind of five years ago, there's one called Sinister. And it was just a little bit one. different, mm. and it was just there was a bit of a twist, and it was a bit of everything, yeah, yeah. and it's just really messed with your head. Interesting. Yeah, mm. yeah. I so like. when when you crochet, do you crochet the horror scenes? Yeah. Uh, no, I hope. Does it affect your crocheting abilities? <laughs> 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 no, I've got a nice um, even stitch when I crochet. No, so I like to I make I like to make um, scarves and toys. At the moment, I'm making a. A door stop so my mirror doesn't blow over in my hallway, but it's shaped like a giant manatee. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. All inspired but, by horror. But like oh. literally. And then so my the biggest It's a horror manatee. <laughs> it's a horror manatee. Um, that would be incredible if it was. I could make it a horror manatee. I could manatee. make it a horror <laughs> manatee. But yeah, no, the biggest piece I did was for it was my niece for her fourth birthday. I made um whatever the unicorn is called from My Little Pony. I don't know what it's called. And it like, without... Does anybody know what it's called, the unicorn from My Little Ponies? Rarity. Yeah. Rarity. It's Rarity. Rarity. Nice. Okay. But I had to do a pink mane because she didn't want the purple mane. Yeah, and, okay. Um, and it turned out to be about this big and it took me Oh, that's forever, huge. But it looked amazing, if I do say so myself. Yeah, no, no, you were allowed to say and that. And I gave it to a four-year-old and she loved it, but oh, I don't bet. think she realized how much, much time effort? Yeah, it took yeah, 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 yeah. That, but yeah, I really do enjoyed it. Do you remember that conversation we had about a week ago? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> About you crocheting something for me? Oh, what was I going to crochet you? I oh, I'm remember. so disappointed that you don't remember. Wasn't it the unicorn? No. She just gave it away. No, yeah. it would, it's, it's a Viking. Oh, it was. Yeah, with a, a pretty sweet, like yeah. red braided beard. I'm just gonna. Te <laughs> I'm gonna text myself. <laughs> I love how I, how I actually you have to. I ask you to make a big beard because my beard isn't That's satisfactory right. enough for myself. I remember. I remember we had the conversation about yeah. sort of like plats or like. Yeah, it's gotta yeah, have plats yeah, in. Yeah, it's really okay. cool. Just send a message. We'll talk more about that later on. So <laughs> you say, I'll, I'll get that next next question going on. Mike no. Beard. Mike <laughs> Beard. I'm not sure if that's really going to tell you what you think. So. <laughs> anyway, so oh yes, here we got another question. This one is. Who loves creating super difficult lever levels for Mario Maker 2? This, oh, I had a feeling this was going to be that. Yeah, oh, yeah, we're doing this again. Yeah, yeah, see, this is a perfect example of gender bias. This is science for you the guys. straight to the data. Yeah, this I know. This You're is... all going to be in a study. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, well, Shin and Dax are pretty close. But oh, I'm, you know... Well, what do we got here? V votes? Yeah, we're, we've got some pretty good votes coming in. But you girls aren't pulling up anywhere. I'm sorry. I play computer yeah, games. I play games. So yeah. just... I believe you both play games. It's not me. Don't look at me. I'm not the one voting everyone. I'm just relaying information that everyone here in the audience is... I think it was the super difficult part that maybe... They're, they're like, someone here's a jerk. And it's not... <laughs> I'm too and it's nice. Probably, yeah. And it's clearly... Death. Is it me? Is that me? Yeah. <laughs> 
been voted for so many things. Yeah, um, it's true. But this one is you. Yeah, well, that's, yes. what you told, that's what you told us. I didn't say super difficult. It's true. I mean, I added that bit. It's true. That's true. Yeah, it's true. I added yeah, that bit. Yeah, but it is fun. It's fun to make. Does anyone else hear Mario Maker 2? No? Just. How many Mario Maker 2 fans we got on here? Put your hands okay. up. Sweet. Yep. You're all my best friends now. Okay. Um, You're going to have to share your levels with them. Oh, yeah. Share yours with me as well. And yeah, 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 we'll yeah. do that afterwards. It's very fun pastime. It's fun to make it. Yeah. Yeah, if everyone actually put it in the YouTube comments, if you've got a, a level that you've created, throw it up there. And, oh, yeah. You know, if Dax you will do, totally I'll play, play it. it and I'll give it a, a, a like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So throw it up in the YouTube comments and let us fans. know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, I, I love that. See, look at that. Video game science? How, what more can you want? Oh, okay. Let's do this one now. I like this question. Okay. Who wanted. To first to be a Power Ranger, which I love that that's actually a career. <laughs> I do. Oh, okay. No. Then a paleontologist, oh, then a jazz pianist, before deciding to become a scientist. That's a lot of things. It is a lot of things. But I do love that this person really shifted career paths <laughs> quite a bit from saving the world to trying to dig up old bones yep. <laughs> to what, playing the piano <laughs> <laughs> and then saying nah you know I don't like those kinds of things anymore I want to be a scientist maybe they still like them but they just didn't want to make a career out of those that's things. true maybe they still dig up bones and save, save the, the world while playing jazz piano that would be one of the best superheroes of all time and I believe awesome. that superhero is you Dax yeah that it? was also me um yeah, I, Power Rangers are awesome. They are, they are. Um, so obviously I wanted to be one. Which one? Which color? Yeah. People love the coloring. Um, <laughs> I don't know. For some reason I always liked the blue one, but I feel like he was never interesting. Maybe that says something about my, how I see myself. Uh, <laughs> it was funny. I was just a kid. Anyway, uh, and then I just got really into dinosaurs for pretty much my whole life. Correct. Yeah. yeah I think, did did you guys here go through a dinosaur phase? Currently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. My boys are in that phase yeah. as well. I'm yeah. still going through it. Are you still going through that phase? I love it. Ooh, there's a huge, you can't, no can you way. show that? Show the, show the yeah. thing, wait. We'll do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love that you're flexing. Yeah. Hit that camera. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. There it is. It's this way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. What is it? It's a velociraptor. And what is the velociraptor doing? It's just being a velociraptor. I just like the weird little claw thing, so I sp I didn't want the whole body. I just wanted the bust with like the fingers. You, it would be. Can Can you make it possibly playing jazz piano? You want me to add? Yeah. Yeah. Add a piano. I love it. And a Power Ranger. Does, and a Power Ranger. Does anyone have a tattooed gun and some? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't. Come on. So if I don't mean now, like, this is something we could do later. Yeah. Mate, we'll we'll, yeah. we'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> See, so, so I don't, any favorite co Power Ranger colors in the audience? Yell it red. out. Red. Red? Red. Yellow. Wow, oh, red. Pink. Red. Black. Pink. There's a Pink. Black. Pink. I like yellow. Pink's good. White. Black's cool. I didn't even know. There's, it there's only one person yelling out white, but you have a very loud voice. So, you know, I think it's, that's, yeah. yeah. White is that counts winner. for at least seven votes. A hundred percent for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done. Wait, any, did anyone yell blue? All right, cool. Just oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Well, obviously the role is available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone it's true. else. Everyone, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. Blue, Blue. okay. Okay, sweet. there you we go. Let's do it. Uh, okay, we've got one last, one last question. Here's whose brother is an actual rocket scientist, making them think they should also be an astronaut? Now I think it's just a joke. Everyone That's just puts it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. People yeah. just really believe in me. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Dax, you do everything. I really want to know who this is. Yeah, well, you guys, well, actually, you guys could have voted as well, but it's okay, you don't have to vote now, it's too late. It's okay. Well, we've got Shin there. Mm. This, well, we, and I, Shin's taking the lead. Everyone else is pretty tight. Mm. You know, oh, so. Oh, now I'm really Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Sorry, Seb. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> which I assume is your brother. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, he, oh, is your brother. He's, 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 he's not a rocket scientist. He's not a rocket scientist. He does art curation and plays instruments. Those are uh, that's an awesome career. Yeah, but it's definitely not. No, the it, it, is, yeah. it is by by no means anywhere near yeah. a rocket scientist. It's very different. And I believe it is me. Yeah, yeah. I thought. Yeah, yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. So, did you feel a lot of pressure? Uh, not really, surprisingly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was more just. Um, I guess the kind of environment I had at home. Yeah. 
so. which is a rocket science environment, like a were space environment. Yes. yes. Oh, I wish. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Although, if there were, I don't think the house would have stood for very long. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, my brother and I's method is very much um, tear it apart and see what's what first. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> and then worry about the rest later. Well, yeah, okay. Could you theoretically make a rocket car? Have oh. you thought about that? Theoretically, I Theoretically, yeah. <laughs> and what about practically? <laughs> yeah. And when will it be no. ready? And, and where should I come to see it? Legally. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yes. yeah. okay. Leg the legalities always get into yeah. discoveries, mm. don't they? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, and it is one thing good about the States. There, there is someone who, who made a dragster and just bolted a rocket, rocket engine onto it. Can't ever see anything bad going wrong there. Oh, it's still intact. Yeah, is it really? Oh, it's yeah. Still intact, yeah. I'm impressed, actually. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay, well, fair enough. So, let's see if we've got a few questions from folks here. Um, we've, uh, we've only got a few more minutes, so if, you, if folks uh, online, if you guys want to ask the last few questions uh, for the participants on the show, or if you want to know a little bit more about what they're doing, uh, uh, or anything else, just ask away, and we'll find out what our panel knows. Let's see. Who, oh, let's see. This is, uh, well, you know, there's a, there's a lot of really good questions here. So, okay, yeah, this, uh, I like this one. Let's go for, um, does, D oh, it just disappeared. <laughs> because they get upvoted and downvoted. I think it just got up. Yeah, it just got upvoted. Does dealing with quantum physics require knowledge and a bit of engineering? Yes. Um, I mean, I'm not an engineer, but I a, a bit, li bit of what I'm doing, a, a bit of what I'm doing, kind of counts as engineering because it's combining physics and maths and stuff. So um, you'd have to study either engineering or physics maths, chemistry kind of thing to be able to do it. So engineering or engineering related sciences. Definitely. Yeah, okay. So you don't have to be an engineer. No, there's yeah, a couple yeah. of us that are engineers, but most of us are actually science students rather than engineering students. But and they're I, very related. That brings up a really interesting point that we actually haven't talked about. It's not like you're doing this by yourself, are you? No, I'm in a big group. Yeah. yeah I'm not doing this by myself. And, and science involves a lot of collaboration, doesn't it? Yeah, even the really hardcore sciences like maths and physics, which you always think of like nerdy people working all by themselves at a computer. Yeah. Um, I, like, I like how... Yeah, yeah I don't know. I <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but there's that... Stereotypes. Stereotypes, exactly. Yeah. Um, but there's actually 20 of us. There's 20 of us in my group. And so right. we all work together. Um, you know, we'll be, uh, we have meetings all the time. We... Um, we also hang out. We're like we're all good friends. A lot of us are students, so we're quite a young group. So we we get along quite well. That's very cool. Yeah. So do, you, do the rest of you guys have lab sizes that big? We used to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. And yeah, they ebb and flow, don't, don't they? Graduate. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. No. Cool. True. Yeah. How about you? We. I mean, we don't really have labs per se, but I don't know anyone who works in mathematics who doesn't work collaboratively. Mm. Yeah. Like every time you do anything with anyone. Like there's always many names on a paper. So I've yeah. got projects that I do with certain people. I have projects I do with other people. I've got projects I do with people overseas. Yeah. But if, you know, and there's you know I'll do a little bit, they do a little bit, and everyone is bringing a different kind of expertise, and they all feed off each other, and then you end up with a very good project. So we don't yeah we don't really have labs. Yeah. But we definitely collaborate. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and and I love that about science, isn't mm. it? Because everyone brings in a little bit of knowledge, yeah. and you're working with a lot of people. And I have students that ask me all the time. I, I don't really like doing group work. Do I have to do that assignment? It's like, well, kind of everything you do in life is yeah. Yeah. with other people. Yeah. I hated group work at school. Yeah, I was always yeah. like, oh, I never want to have to do this again. I'm going to go do maths all by myself. Now, it turns out you can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> turns out that every time you want to do any science, you do not want to have to do it all by yourself because there's so much work to do. Like, yeah. you want to do it in groups so you can do the bit you're good at and other people can do the bits they're good yeah. at and you all work together and... And yeah, you don't have to much. know everything. Oh, and you don't have to know sure. everything. Exactly. There's so much I don't know yeah. that I've got some really smart people that I can ask. Mm. Yeah. So here we've got, I got, well, I'd probably ask um, two last questions. And here's one. Would you guys ever change your profession if you got the chance? This one got upvoted by a lot of people. Yeah, so people want to, have you guys found <clears throat> your one true calling? 
I no, guess. I don't, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I mean, I love what I do. Yeah. But I don't think there's just one thing for everyone. Like, mm. you can, there's all kinds of things I'd love to do. So, if something else came along that I liked, felt like doing more right now, then I'd do that. Yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah, I don't. And you know, and I think it, it depends where you are. And so I'm in academia at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I just think they're sometimes probably better places to be that I could be more useful. What I would actually really love to do is, so I'm originally from Adelaide, so if everyone here has been to like the Powerhouse Museum, yep. right? We used to have one of those in Adelaide, it was called the Investigator Science Centre, and they shut it down like 15 really? years ago. And it doesn't exist anymore. And they've never opened up anything and then, like it. And they, they kind of did, but it was very, very different and there was no funding. There are all these yeah, problems yeah, that, yeah, uh, yeah. so what I would love to do is go back and reopen the Investigator Science Centre, so there can be a proper science and technology centre for all the kids in South Australia again. So I'm gonna I'm gonna re-ask that question in a slightly different way. Are you guys super passionate about what you're doing now? Yeah. Yes. So in a way, you would change if you found something you were as passionate mm -hmm. about. And it could still be the same passions; they're just being used in, in a, a different, different way. way. Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, I guess the answer is do what you love, because when you do the things that you love, it doesn't really feel like work. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and you get to explore and work with some really cool people. So. Yeah, and I mean, if you want to be a scientist, you kind of have to love the topic because it's really, really hard work sometimes. You know, yeah. sometimes sometimes stuff doesn't work and it can be really frustrating. And if you're not doing something you love, then mm. that's going to turn you off. So, yeah. yeah, if I have a bad day in the lab, at least I'm working towards something I really love doing. So it doesn't, yeah. doesn't bother me too much. And this works in really well to that. Last question we're going to do today is, what advice would you give to aspiring scientists? <laughs> my, my answer is always the same. Please, everyone, do <laughs> as much maths as humanly <laughs> possible. And it computing. Is, so maths, computing, statistics, they are the backbone of everything else you'll do. So, you know, just because you want to do biology, if you have those maths, it's because you're, when you're learning maths, it's not just algebra and calculus. You're learning all of these other skills that you don't realize you're learning. So yeah. it's about problem solving and critical and analytical thinking and researching and communication and all this kind of stuff because maths is a language and you learn to communicate this other language, right? So doesn't matter what you want to do, and I'm not suggesting everyone go and be a mathematician. I know it's not for everyone. <laughs> like, but whatever you want to do, even if you don't want to work in STEM, in science or technology or engineering or mathematics, if you want to go and work somewhere else, the more maths you have, the, m the better you will be at that thing compared to the people who don't have as much maths as you. There is like actual scientific studies done on it. Please just everyone do maths. So yeah. I, 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 you know what, I'm going to... I'm going to ask the question that's probably burning in everyone's mind right now is, but how about if I, that's not my favorite part of the science bit? I, and unfortunately, I, I understand that like sometimes maths can seem a little bit boring, and the problem is we have to learn to crawl before we can walk. So the thing is, you're doing all of these things that seem maybe a little bit pointless, like, I don't know why I have to learn this, it, like, I'm never going to use this again. That's probably not true at all in any way. So. Maths is a subject that builds on everything else, and you will hit stuff that just seems dumb to you. As I said, don't yep. care about Circles geometry. Like, <laughs> don't <laughs> care at yeah. all. But I still use it from time to time, and I still find it a little bit tricky. So there's just some things, and I know it, it doesn't sound fun, but like you've just kind of got to grit your teeth, get through it. The thing that comes up next, you might love it, right? Yep. So yep. the thing you don't want to do is walk away because you will regret it later, and that is the thing that I hear the most. The thing that I regret is that I don't know any statistics. So yeah, I just okay. did maths, but I didn't do any statistics. Yep. If I did statistics, I would be so much more useful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so. I totally agree. Yeah, um, okay. And like all science is built on maths, like literally every area of science, even the... <laughs> huh? I love you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are the same You guys are yeah, we are. Fast, But also, so, yeah, also computing. So I mean, like especially these days, a lot of um, schools teach programming now, which is really great. Um, and I think... It's important that people get on board with learning a programming language or learning some basics of it, even if you're not going to become a really like a computer scientist or anything. Um, most maths is done on computers. Most science is done via maths on computers. Um, just about everything you do in life will be manipulating data or manipulating something on computers. It's a really, really useful skill for any level of science, but also even other, other fields of work, careers as well. Shin or Dax, do you guys have anything to add? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, also, yeah, I totally agree with that. Like, uh, when I first came to university, 
I just hated my stats course. It was the worst. <laughs> and because it, it is boring. Like it's, 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 it's so boring. boring. But at sure. the same time, <laughs> uh, I use stats every day now. And but you I've, use stats to answer your I've own questions. I've learned to right? like it as well, yeah. especially when you realize that so many other people never learn to use stats, and they're all the scientists now. So these things that you thought were real, like all these psychology studies that people always talk about, um, they're all not replicating. They're not coming out as true yeah. because they all designed their project or they did the wrong stats because they didn't understand it. So like just knowing that little bit extra, you can actually trust what you find, which is yeah. so important. Yeah. 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 It helps you understand research mm. as well. And Shin? Um, mine would be a little different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? But it ties into what you said earlier a bit. Um, get used to failure. Yes. Okay. And <laughs> not... Not taking failure as an endpoint, but a beginning. Yeah. Because too many people, and this applies to all of you in school, and it applies to, um, I teach a lot of undergraduate students, but it applies a lot to them as well. A lot of the time when they fail, the first question they ask is, why? But they don't ask why they failed, as in where they went wrong. Yeah. They ask why they failed, as in why did I not get marks for the things I wrote. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and that's yeah, yeah. a very misguided way to approach how you think, especially yep. if you're trying to get into science. Mm. And you're going to have failures regardless of what you do. It doesn't matter if yep. it's science, it doesn't matter if it's anything else in life. But when you fail, the important thing is, what can I do better next time? Yep, yep. absolutely. Because too many people, and it's really concerning because some of these are aspiring scientists doing an undergraduate degree, Yep. and their end point is, you know, why didn't I get the yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and they start questioning whether they yeah. belong there. Yeah, and this yeah. I think very much applies to high school students as well, especially when you know you don't get the marks that you think you should have gotten. Try not to worry too much about the marks. Like even trying to get into uni, you didn't get the right ATAR or whatever. It's not the end of the world. So many ways to get in. Yeah, yeah. and the important bit is, you know, the, that two numbers that you got. Or three in some cases, apparently. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. it's a matter of what can you do better next time? Where did you go wrong? And that's very much the, m the much more important question, I think. Well, like, were you all really just a student? I was going to say that. Yeah, because yeah. I was a just terrible student oh, really? for a lot of my, like, not terrible, <laughs> but like, yeah. you know, very middle, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. not really doing anything special. And then. You know, I don't know, maybe my last year of university, yeah, then yeah. suddenly I was like, wow, this stuff's awesome. And yeah. I mean, it took me until then to really try, you know, and yeah. that's what it takes. Yeah, yeah. but there's Fair also enough. like a, a common thing where a lot of people who go into science um, did really well in school, right? And so you start, then you go into science in uni and you all of a sudden find things hard and you panic because you're used to doing really well yeah. at things. Um, true. And that's very true of a lot of people who go into PhDs. Um, until you realise, well, you actually have to get a whole lot of stuff wrong before you get stuff right in science. Yep, absolutely. Unlike school, where you can just go through, and if you're, um, if you do especially well with your marks at school, you can just go through and keep getting stuff right. Yep. Um, but yeah, you have to learn to feel stupid because yep, science absolutely. doesn't get done if you know what's going to happen. Absolutely, and and you know, I think those are really, really good messages to kind of end on. You know, work really hard. You know, be passionate and driven about what you want to discover, and just keep trying, even when you do get things wrong. So I, I hope everyone here and uh, watching with us on YouTube Lives kind of got that message and had a little bit of fun and understood that science isn't all encompassing and it's something that we do and that we love, but scientists are a lot of things and, and we're all very different and you know, you guys can be that as well. So I hope you enjoyed joining us for the Sydney Science Festival and for this Arluto live show. If this is something that you did enjoy, please join us again. Hit that little subscribe button and be part of the show. We do this every two weeks and we bring new scientists on so you guys can experience a little bit more science and understand what this whole scientific world is all about. So please do subscribe and join us. And I'd love to thank my panelists today. Thank you so much. And audience, I'd love to thank you guys for being here. Thank you very much. So, and with that, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much, everyone. That was amazing. I hope you all enjoyed the show. So I think we've got a few.